Uh, my name is Shelley Gilbert, and I'm the coordinator of social work services at Legal Assistance of Windsor. And we're the lead organization for an initiative called We Fight, which actually began in 2002. And it supports survivors of human trafficking, any type of human trafficking, and survivors both internationally as well as domestic. So we work with individuals who have both been brought into Canada from other countries, who um, are then trafficked here in Canada, um, or individuals, permanent residents or Canadian citizens who find themselves in a circumstance of trafficking. So we provide all the basic supports that individuals need to restart their lives, right from helping people to find housing, to get on social assistance, to connect with other social agencies, to deal with people's immigration if it is an issue of international trafficking, um, as well as deal with the trauma that people experience as a result of the trafficking experience, and very often uh, the trauma that they experienced prior to getting into trafficking circumstances that perhaps made them vulnerable to be in a trafficking circumstance in the first place. So we try and bring both the legal supports together as well as social work supports, connect people with our community partners so that people can move forward with their lives. In order for a circumstance of human trafficking to exist, there's really three main elements. The first being that there is some form of recruitment or bringing the, the victim at that point to the offenders, to the traffickers. That recruitment might be through kidnapping, it could be through deception, through trickery, through some sort of lies that the trafficker tells their victim to bring them to them. So the recruitment of the person. Secondly, there is some sort of exploitation um, where the trafficker is forcing someone um, to work for them, to make them money, usually money in Canada, um, to, to make them money in some way. And that's why we try not to type anymore, although you know, the main issues of trafficking are in the sex trade industry, they could be in labor, they may be through marriage, there can be any number of industries, and we certainly find um, survivors in any number of industries, but the person is being forced to work through some form of coercion, through either threats, through violence, of course, through, again, some sort of fraud or deception. And finally, there's an element of exploitation. Somebody is making money off that individual's work. So there is recruitment, coercion, and exploitation at the end of the day in order to constitute the crime of human trafficking. I think that one of the myths is that this um, is an international issue, that people come over um, from other countries only, um, and that it continues to be the idea that it is uh, a young woman only, that uh, sex trafficking is the only type of human trafficking that we have. Um, so I think we do have to recognize that Canadian girls are also susceptible um, to being trafficked, and um, recognize that just about anyone, uh, depending on the sophistication, if we want to call it that, of the trafficker can be lured towards a trafficker. Very often in the issue of sex trafficking, we find issues of young women who are lured through what we call the boyfriend pimp strategy, where a trafficker pretends, really, that he is having a relationship with that uh, victim and lures her into a relationship with that person and then begins deceiving her, tricking her, perhaps forcing her to work into the sex, in the sex trade industry. That's a very common strategy that pimps or traffickers use to recruit young women. Then, if that young girl is at home, for instance, and still living at home, which may be another myth that the traffickers are somehow confining her, and sometimes that does happen, to a single place, but we are also working with very young women who are still living at home and perhaps they are leaving school or perhaps they leave home in the middle of the night and are forced to go with the trafficker at that point and work in the sex trade industry. So it's not necessarily let the, that the traffickers are kidnapping these young women all the time and keeping them confined in a space. Young women might be moving um, from home to school to the trafficker and perhaps that trafficker is using some form of coercion to keep them working for them. So I think parents and the general public have to recognize that there are a number of signs that we could be looking for for our young people and recognize those signs instead of, I think, what the stereotype is that young women are kidnapped 
and forced and basically chained to a bed or to a radiator. That is not necessarily always the case. Very often young women have said to us, I initially said I would work in prostitution. I would work in the sex trade industry. Um, and so I can't be a victim of human trafficking. And so it means some education around when does the circumstance of trafficking start? Because perhaps it wasn't trafficking if you chose to work in the sex trade industry initially, but did it become trafficking when you were no longer able to determine uh, when you were working, with whom you were going to have a date, if you're not charging um, or, or keeping the money that you are charging, if you're not deciding on the types of acts you might be doing, if somebody else is taking all that money and making those decisions and hurting you or threatening you if you don't want to work in the industry anymore, that's when trafficking starts. Not when you initially agreed to, but at those times when you no longer have control of the circumstances that you're in and somebody else is making those decisions for you. That's when trafficking starts. I think there's two different things that people should think about. What does this person want to do? Are they safe to get out of the circumstance? When we, when we meet people, the first thing that we talk about is safety planning. Is the offender still at large? Do they want to speak to the police? Because not everybody wants to speak to the police. Um, but do they want to do that? And um, if they don't want to speak to the police or their offenders are still at large, where can we have you be that is a safe place for you. And that's where our community partners, both within Windsor and Essex County and across the province and really across the country come in. Because we are in circumstances where we have to relocate people to other jurisdictions or other jurisdictions relocate, relocate people to us for their safety. So first we look at safety issues. We also talk about um, even being safe if you choose to continue working in the sex trade industry and how you can do that safely and how you can um, reach out to service providers if you get into a circumstance that, that's dangerous for you. Um, and so once we sort of address the safety issues, then we start building from there and looking at are there other opportunities for you to make money? Do we want to look at financial assistance, social assistance at that point? Do we want to look at school? How do we address trauma? We also have a heavy focus on helping people to obtain and maintain affordable, safe, healthy housing. Once we have some stability with people sort of actually and physically, then we can start establishing or reestablishing some stability emotionally as well. So that takes a lot of work. It, talk, it, it speaks to, I think, um, really talking with the people that come to us and deciding how they want to move forward. Um, and it speaks to developing the collaborations and the protocols with our community partners so that they know how to best provide services to traffic people. Hashtag, we've got you.